Hi, my name is Dave Clark, and I'm working with Project 5 on a series of podcasts to help anyone working in the NHS to access a range of one-to-one support and self-help resources. In this episode, we hear from Dr. Craig Newman about Project 5, how it came about, what it's already providing, and the plans for the future. I'm Craig Newman. I'm a clinical psychologist by background. Uh, I'm the CEO of Project 5, amongst other things. So Project 5 is aimed at NHS people. Mm-hmm. You know, it's aimed at the team. And, and I would say that, you know, if to ask yourself if you're feeling very tired or stressed or distressed, then that this is for you. Right. You know, that's the only entry criteria. NHS badge and feeling like you might need someone to chat to. So I run a company called UXC Group, uh, and that includes uh, a sister company called uh, AIMU. We're a collection of psychologists and coaches who carry out innovation and essentially help organizations to understand how to innovate quickly, but how to do that whilst also having a big ear to well-being. So I uh, I was getting increasing calls to uh, ask about how we could scale up our business offering to more and more kind of regions there was a, there was a kind of expectation but i uh, i don't know what happened but i kind of just woke up one day and i just thought you know this is insane like we if we try and scale this up we're, we're not going to do a very good job um because we're not ready and i also thought you know that there's a different approach here actually which is about uh actually designing to scale and then and then basically seeing if there were volunteers that would want to support that and i I just got a sense that there would be appetite for that because there was for me there was in my team and i was increasingly bumping into psychologists and coaches and therapists who were saying do you know how we can help so uh, i put out an advert saying who wants to help thinking about 20 people who I know might say yes. And then within about two weeks, we've got 4,000 volunteers. So that changed the landscape very quickly for us in terms of, you know, we had to deliver something that would meet both sides of this, something that would be totally um, appropriate for the NHS staff, but also could accommodate a volunteer base of that size. So what is it exactly that you're trying to do? What we're trying to do is create an offering that creates value for people in early care or early well-being areas of need. Mm-hmm. Um, that's very accessible. Um, and that means that we do probably have to depart from some of how people understand mental health and some of the language used. I have a real sense that what teams need is some support and understanding they should get help early. Mm-hmm. You know, let's not wait for this, you know, this prophesized potential tsunami of mental health crisis you know let's get something in very early Let, let's do what has been done in the commercial world for a long time which is think about systems think about leadership think about well-being and think about different types of support for different types of people but in a way that is you know accessible um, and very much inviting so what makes project five such an enticing offer you know to the nhs i mean you've been chosen as one of the only independent well-being support services by the NHS to support their staff. So, you know, why is that? So it's important to say that everything in Project 5 is within a specific type of model, um, and that model is to a very high standard. It's built to the standard of of really a gold standard mental health service. So it's uh, governed to a very high standard by a clinical governance committee that has numerous experts and specialists in organisations represented, it has a research committee, which ha- which is represented by clinical psychologists and academics and partnered with a university clinical psychology department. It has a stakeholder group with numerous uh, NHS representatives, occupational health and charity representatives. I-, I could go on, you know, it's basically a very highly governed model. And so everything has a critical eye to it. And it is designed to build on what is the, the existing best practice. Mm-hmm. In terms of what is actually provided within that, it, we have we we've got something called a multi-tier model for the staff that come to us. There's a self-help resource that they might activate, um, and then there are coaching uh, supporters um, who will support people who are stressed but not distressed. Yeah. And for any staff who feel they're distressed or are on the front line, they will be supported by mental health practitioners. And everybody within the uh, within the program is is verified as being suitably qualified, suitably insured, with a reference um, 
and register with a body who have a recognized global code of ethics so you know it's it's a it's a you know it's actually a very very high standard which which is you know we believe is the baseline of really what you should be offering into a space like this so just tell me a little bit more about some of the people that are involved on the project five side yeah and actually i think it's really important that get that does get represented because you know the actual project relies on volunteers and very highly skilled volunteers all of the members really are selected based on appropriateness qualification and and areas that they work in in the past um and there's 35 people actually across the organization now who are running this or within a comms team a governance team a research team an admin team and a, a consultation team so you know it's actually a very big group let's say uh i'm a porter working at a big hospital i'm tired I've seen the wear and tear on my colleagues. It's having a toll on my personal life. I'm recognising that I might need to reach out and get some help. How would I make use of Project 5? What would I do? Yeah, so Project 5 is a very accessible service for NHS staff. It's just a booking service. You go to a website, it finds out what you need, and then it links you to that. That might be self-help material, but more likely it's one-to-one -one support from a coach or a mental health practitioner. So you'd, you'd arrive at the website and you'd essentially be asked very quickly if you're looking to help yourself with some information or whether you're stressed or whether you're distressed. And we've kind of gone with those words really to try and differentiate. But really the stress to distress question will just take you to a very brief kind of interview where we just ask you to kind of pick where you are amongst four questions that are really just to spot what you might need. Once, we, once the system knows that, you'll be sent to a calendar where you can just pick the time that you'd like to talk to somebody mm -hmm. and once you pick a time you're kind of emailed immediately and you're told how to make contact with that person and that that coach or that mental health practitioner will contact you and arrange with you how best to to uh, connect in that hour that you've selected so we've had some really positive feedback and some of the coaches and therapists, one therapist wrote to me this week and said, you know, she was in tears by the positive feedback she'd received from an NHS staff member. You know, I think that really is a testament to the value and the way they framed it was, was really interesting. They said, you know, I felt like you were holding my hand through this, which was really an interesting way of framing it in a world of having to stay two meters from each other. Yeah. So it demonstrates to me that despite there being a technological connection through a video conferencing software, actually that there, there felt like some real contact between them. Uh, and that that just makes it all worthwhile, doesn't it? How do people A, find out more and B, how would you encourage people to kind of spread the word? Yeah, so that, so both of these are imperative. Uh, we are trying to create a movement and, and we're up against it really because the movement we're trying to create is that you don't have to be, you don't have to have fallen apart to get help. You know, I think there's a real kind of sense, but particularly for NHS staff, you know, that you just drive on until you can't. You know, I, we, we've got a real message here, which is this support's very valid. You know, the type of stuff we're offering, like, corporations have been buying for a lot of money for a long time to support their teams um what what can be done to help that movement and to help that spread is for that message to be get out is to be pushed out so i think that if you are somebody who knows people in the nhs or you're with somebody in your family or or anything like that or even if you work in the nhs you know you you should be signaling to people that actually like you can go and get a chat like even if you just feel like your job's a bit harder mm -hmm. Like that can be enough because your job being a bit harder might not, might not sound like a need. But in the context of being in lockdown and having all these other fears and anxieties and that potentially being the case for a very long time, it could be helpful for you to get some support early in that process as to how you could ease that. If you want to find out more, you know, that's actually quite simple. You just, uh, you can go to our website, which is uh, project5.org, or you can search for our hashtag on pretty much all social media, which is hashtag we are project five. That's the number five. My thanks go to Dr. Craig Newman for talking to us. This is a how production for project five. By sharing this podcast, among your colleagues, friends and family, you can help more people access the support that we may all need from time to time.